And now we are at that point in the show where we are going to talk about some healthy swaps. And the healthy swap for this week is swapping out our alcohol for a healthier option or even seeing it in a different way. And I decided to bring along a special guest today to help me with this topic. For those of you that don't know me very well, I don't drink much alcohol. So I thought I'd best bring somebody along that knows a little bit more about the topic than what I do. My special guest today is Rihanna Chapman, and she's the founder of The Drink Swap, which is a business that make fantastic non-alcoholic alternatives so that you still feel like you're spoiling yourself and not having the alcohol. How are you today? Hi, Snesh. How are you? I'm very well, very well indeed. It's lovely to have you. And look, today's segment is about making healthy swaps around alcohol. So I'm really excited to have you. Amazing. I feel like, yes, you are exactly in my corner. This is something that I'm really passionate and excited to talk about. So thank you for having me. Uh, You're most welcome. And we will mention that, Rihanna, your uh, business is The Drink Swap, which I think is quite funny considering the segment's called Bar Swaps. (laughs) Um, Tell us in a quick summary what you do. Yeah, so we're a family-run business. Um, We're a family from Greensboro and our business is all about finding a non-alcoholic swap for your favourite drinks. So things like craft beers, spirits, wines, bubbly, um, finding a really delicious non-alcoholic alternative to help you cut back on your alcohol consumption. Excellent. Like that is just so perfect and that's why you're the perfect person to have on the show today. (laughs) And I'm just going to mention, like, we've only just met very recently at quite a a unique (laughs) meeting. We both met each other at the Preston Market. We did. We were doing our Dry July pop-up at the Preston Market and your beautiful face popped up at my my pop-up. And so it was great. It was a great way to meet. And it was interesting because you were offering samples there. And I don't know if you remember this, but as I said, I'm a non-alcohol drinking person, generally speaking. And um, and you said, oh, you know, we can uh, we can try sample some of our non-alcoholic wines. And I thought to myself, like, I know when I go to the Preston Market with my sons, all three of them, like I like them to smell the smells of the fish mm. market and, you know, sample whatever they can. And it just becomes mm. this really fantastic. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. And in my mind, I thought, um, they're going to taste some sort of fruit juice or something. Yeah. And I don't know whether you sort of looked at me, I'll be like, why are you giving these boys wine? But <laughs> I didn't really realise until I saw the expression, I think, on my middle son's face, who's 15. And I thought, oh, what's that look on his face? And then I tried it and I just couldn't believe how much like alcohol it actually tasted it really does yeah a lot of yeah so we we don't normally give them to kids I will say yeah Um, (laughs) I know it was so funny I felt so silly after um but they do so a lot of our products have been made as alcohol and then de-alcoholized to retain as much of the flavor as possible but some of them have never been alcohol so they're um distilled with herbs or botanicals or extracts to just replicate a nice flavor no, oh, wow, that's so funny. And I seriously, once I tasted it myself, I just went, oh, she probably thinks I'm a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we're talking about smart swaps. And every week when I do introduce a different swap, it's also just about introducing why would people want to do this. And uh, I see all the time working in the wellness space, the impact of alcohol. So my question to you is, why would people want to swap out their alcohol? Well, I'll use myself as an example. I was um, someone who, you know, really struggled in the pandemic. I was drinking too much. I was homeschooling my kids and the pressure of it. I was just getting up from my computer at the end of the day and grabbing a wine. And then that wine became two wines. And um, I really started to feel the health impacts. I'm in my mid forties now and I was starting to get insomnia. I was fatigued. I had brain fog, um, weight gain gain lots of different things were happening and it and it just dawned on me that I really didn't have control of this um you know and I wasn't a massive drinker but it just wasn't helping my overall feeling of wellness I just didn't feel on top of things anymore and so so I 
just started swapping a few. So it was just the weeknight wine. While I was cooking dinner, I swapped to a non-alcoholic alternative and it just helped me really cut back because, you know, the maximum recommended standard drinks are, is 10 standard drinks, which one standard drink is only 100 mils of wine. So it's very, very easy to creep over that if you're having a wine every night and a few drinks on the weekend. Um, and yeah, that, right. yeah, and there are so many knock-on effects from that. Absolutely. And you're not alone in that story. I've seen so many people have your exact same journey. But what I love about what you said was that you started to recognize some of the symptoms and the impact of, you know, and, and the effects of consuming that extra alcohol. Whereas I think people put up with some of those symptoms or effects of the alcohol, not really realizing or connecting it to the alcohol itself. And I think if that's the really strong message that we can get across today is that if people are drinking, to use some of our healthy swaps that we're about to teach them how to use and to see that those symptoms will alleviate. So did you notice a change quite quickly? I did. And what I really noticed was that um, I thought about what, like, what was my motivation for the drinking? Like I was never a massive drinker, even during the pandemic, I wasn't what anyone would call a huge drinker, but um, I was, the reason I was drinking was to have my me time, my mummy time, you know, particularly yeah. in the pandemic, it was like just that little ritual of cracking open a bottle of wine, pouring myself a glass and just having that head space. And so yeah. what I found was that what I was enjoying was not necessarily the alcohol, but it was just that experience. And so doing a non-alcoholic swap for me still gave me that kind of little dopamine rush and that just quiet time, mummy time, no one talked to mummy. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and so I was um, still, and very quickly, once I was able to cut back, I was sleeping so much better. Sleep was the big one for me. And I kind of linked it to being maybe perimenopausal or something, but really as soon as I cut back on my drinking, sleep just really came in and my skin yeah. improved there are a lot of interpersonal benefits as well I was just really snippy um and irritable yes yeah. yeah, so I can really see that that would that makes so much sense so let's have a bit of a brainstorm between you and I of some yeah. different ideas so we're talking about healthy swaps and if people are going to swap out their alcohol and there's two things that you've said one thing is the experience of taking some time out. So we mm -hmm. could even do something like for me, it's my shower, my roller, mm -hmm. as in my foam roller, because yeah. my body does a lot in one day. And then my big mug of tea, whatever flavor of beautiful flavor I've gone with. And that's kind of like me and my husband makes me the tea every night. So that's sort of a little someone doing something for me after I've done everything <laughs> for everybody else. And that's kind of my wind down and that's sort of my me time. Yeah, well, I really like the ritual element of what you do. I think that's really lovely. And it doesn't, you know, it could be a bath. It could be anything that you do that gives you that feeling of relaxation and peace or it could be a drink you know um it could be soda water and lime or uh you know we've obviously got a huge range of beautiful non-alcoholic swaps but it doesn't need to be something like that there can be lots of different yeah. ways that you can yourself um Yes. Well, where I'm at the moment in winter, I'm very big on mulled wine. So I am making myself a nice little mulled wine concoction with some cinnamon and star anise, a non-alcoholic version, obviously, um, and citrus, like little citrus wedges and stuff. And that warms me up and makes me feel cozy. I was talking to a naturopath in law. Her suggestion was to actually use uh, mineral water with apple cider vinegar in it. Ah, oh, I've seen and, this actually on TikTok or something. Someone's doing oh, have you? Yeah. yeah, and I was like, because I I do hot water with apple cider vinegar every morning. That's another one of my rituals. Yeah, but I would never think to. And people are at home that are real champagne lovers. Yeah, <laughs> or, like, <laughs> or anything sparkly are sitting back. I can I can just see them listening to the radio, going, "That is ridiculous. Who would do that?" But I haven't actually done it myself, but. I, uh, one of my members went off and did it and she just said, Snege, it actually is quite good. And Amazing. So good for your gut. 
yeah um, i can imagine yeah oh i really i even like like a nice jug of in in summer in particular we'll do a jug of like water or mineral water with cucumber slices and mint and lime and you just let that infuse for a while it's delicious yeah and if and because if people are looking for that fizz they can definitely make that same mix up uh with a bit of mineral water mm. or soda water couldn't they yeah yeah absolutely yeah and it's quite limitless in terms of you know whether people are putting peppermint through there or uh rosemary even I've heard through there like yeah. there's just so many and you For can sure. puree yeah you could also puree any fruit as well let's get into the real stuff the nitty-gritty yeah <laughs> so what sorts of things because I think that day what I tried maybe was uh I think it was like a, a rosé actually yeah so we do lots of wines um we've got some beautiful australian de-alcoholized wines and one thing we've really tried to do is just taste far and wide there's actually a lot of rubbish out there with non-alcoholic drinks and when i was pregnant 11 years ago the the quality just wasn't there um and i bought things and i just tipped them down the sink it was awful but Every time we get a new product, the quality is just better and better. The technology of extracting the alcohol gets more sophisticated and big wine producers are coming into the space with big budgets. So they've really built uh, very sophisticated ways of taking the alcohol out, but still yeah, keeping well. the flavor. Yeah, yeah but um, that's what I was yeah. really surprised about because I just, just, I just assumed that the alcohol was creating that flavor. So um, yeah. So no, I think what really you lose is the burn. You don't have the burn of an alcohol, yeah. I know but that burn you don't have, but you have the flavor. So we've really tried to find um, drinks that aren't sweet. You know, for me, I don't want to replace my um, alcoholic drink with a soft drink. I could just go and grab a yeah. Coke. So Absolutely. we've tried to find really sophisticated adult tasting complex drinks um and so we've tasted far and wide and put together it's not a massive range it's a small but neat range that we really think is high quality and the other thing that the other question that I did have for you is that not only uh, not only are we removing the alcohol content but I know when we remove the alcohol content we also partly remove the calorie um yeah. yeah component of that so how much does that differ Quite a lot. So I'll give you an example. Um, Geeson is a really well-known wine producer, New Zealand wine producer, and they de-alcoholise their estate wines um, and the equivalent non-alcoholic version is 80% less calories. So um, yeah, you well. lose, yeah. Um, and they're not really high sugar content wines in the first place, but once they de-alcoholise them, it comes down 80%. And it's similar with the beers. They're about 80% the calorie content and sugar content of the alcohol equivalent. Yeah, and and that's that is huge because alcohol, a big part of the impact of alcohol comes with that high calorie content that people don't really realise um, outside of some of the other impacts of the alcohol itself. But that's huge to remove eighty percent. I didn't realise it was that much. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, and we've also, like I said, we're looking for non-sweet drinks. So we have our range is quite low sugar in general just because of our palette and the types of products that we want to stock oh well fantastic well that is just so great to hear from you and we've got some really good ideas of people just you know taking the time to create some ritual around me time and removing that you know creating that as their smart swap to remove alcohol or you know just taking out the soda waters and the mineral waters and flavoring them with all sorts of interesting things mm. or heading over to the drink swap and placing an order amazing thank you yeah spoil yourself just because you're not drinking alcohol you can make a smart swap and still have a nice treat thank you so much rihanna it was absolutely lovely talking to you today likewise Nish. thank you so much for having me thank you everyone bye for now bye